So this video is to demonstrate how to graph these functions for the day 12.5 in class worksheet. This worksheet ranges from uh, graphing sine and cosine that just have horizontal shifts or phase shifts to vertical shifts or both. So if you take a look at example one, uh, I want to identify the amplitude, period, and phase shift, and that's going to give me the information I need to decide how I want to break up my x-axis and y-axis, and then be able to sketch the graph here. So in order to find the amplitude of a sine function, I would look at the number out in front of the function. In this case, it's a 2, so the amplitude is 2. Even if that were negative, the amplitude is always the absolute value of the number in front. So the amplitude is 2. The period would be 2 pi divided by my b value. And in this function, my b value is the number in front of x or the number out front of a binomial if there is a horizontal or phase shift in the graph. So in this case, it would be 2 pi divided by 2, which tells me my period would be pi. And the phase shift for this graph will be to the right pi over 4. Remember, if on the inside of the function it says x minus pi over 4, that's to the right. If it said x plus pi over 4, that'd be a shift to the left. So now I have my three pieces of information. Now I want to decide how I want to break up my x and y axis. So on these first four marks on my x axis, the last one would be pi. That would be the end of my first period. Halfway in between would be pi over 2. And then if I want to think about how to break up my y-axis, my amplitude is 2, which means be, since there's no vertical shift of any kind, the maximum value of this function will be 2 and the minimum will be negative 2. Now, this function has a phase shift of pi over 4. The good news about how my axis is broken up now, the reason why we, one of the reasons why we do four lines is if four lines is pi, then each line on my x-axis is pi over 4. And since I'm going to shift my graph to the right pi over 4, what I'm going to draw is a vertical dotted line at pi over 4. And that's really just going to specify that I'm going to graph my sine function starting at that x value rather than at 0. And when I do that, I also need to add one more tick mark to the right of pi so that I can graph one full period. So I'm going to start my graph at pi over 4. Because this is a sine graph, um, I should start graphing at the midline of my graph. And then I either go up to my maximum or down to my minimum at, to start. Now, if I look at the coefficient out front of my function, it's positive, which means I'm going to graph starting uh, by going up. So the way I graph sine in general is I graph a point at the beginning of my period, a point at the end of my period, and sine will actually cross my midline in the middle. And then because the coefficient's positive, I'm going to go up first and plot my maximum at pi over 2, 2. And then my minimum will be at pi, negative 2. So if I connect these dots that I've drawn, this is one period of my sine function with an amplitude of 2 that has been shifted to the right pi over 4. If I draw a vertical line here at 5 pi over 4, all that just shows is the distance between those x values is one period, um, which is pi in this case. If you take a look at example 2, I have a cosine function. There's a negative out front, and the if you look at the inside of the function, there's a number already factored out. And from this equation, I should be able to identify my period, amplitude, and phase shift without having to do any algebra. So if I look, my amplitude is going to be 3. That negative will impact the way I graph, but my amplitude will still be 3, always positive. My period will be 2 pi divided by 3 pi, since 3 pi is that coefficient out front, and 2 pi over 3 pi is 2 thirds. And my phase shift is going to be 1 sixth to the left. So now that I have those three pieces of information, there's no vertical shift, there's nothing being added or subtracted at the end of the function. I'm going to break up my x-axis, I'm going to draw four lines, and the fourth one's going to be the end of one period, two-thirds, which means half of that would be one-third, and half of that, or my first line, would be one-sixth. So my x-axis, if I break it up how I did, will be counting by one-sixth. So one-sixth, one-third, the next one would be one half, and then two thirds would be one period. And then my y axis, I need a maximum value of three and a minimum value of negative three visible because my amplitude is three and I don't have any vertical shifts. Now, if I want to shift this graph to the left one sixth, the, the good thing about this example is because I'm counting by one sixth, that means each line is one sixth. So if I want to shift this graph to the left, I would put a vertical dotted line at negative 1 6, and that would just show that I'm going to start graphing there, 
and graph one full period of cosine going to the right of that x value. Now if I draw a vertical dotted line four tick marks away from negative one six, that would be one period. Notice it doesn't end at two thirds because I've shifted my whole graph to the left one sixth. So now if I think about how to graph this one, cosine either starts at its highest or lowest value above the midline. So in this case, because there's a negative out front, the first point I'm going to plot is on my shifted x value, so at negative 1, 6, but down at negative 3. So my amplitude is 3, but a negative means I'm going to start down below the midline and go up from there. And then what I graph is that first point and the last point of my period, which should finish at the same y value. And then halfway in between, at 1, 6, that would reach my maximum. So cosine is going to start at negative 3, go up through my midline to my maximum, halfway through my period, and then come back down to finish at negative 3. So then halfway in between those minimums and maximums, on my midline, or in this case the x-axis, I would draw those dots where it should cross the x-axis. And then if I connect them, this graph right here would be this cosine graph that has an adjusted period to two-thirds and been shifted to the left one-sixth. If you look at example three, my amplitude is three. My period will be two pi over four, which is my b value in this case, which is pi over two. And then this will have a horizontal or a phase shift to the left pi over eight. So if I want to break up my x-axis, what I'm going to do is count four lines and call the last one pi over 2, which, tell, which if I think about how that works out for my x-axis in general, each line was going to be pi over 8, because pi over 8, pi over 4 would be the next one, then 3 pi over 8, and then pi over 2. I'm counting by pi over 8, which works nicely with my phase shift. And then in terms of my y-axis, since my amplitude is 3 and I'm not shifting my graph up or down at all, my maximum value that I need to be visible on my y-axis is 3 and my minimum is negative 3. So if I want to shift this graph to the left pi over 8, and each line is pi over 8, I'm going to put a vertical dotted line through negative pi over 8, and that's going to be the beginning of this period that I'm going to draw. And then I would end that period one line to the left of pi over 2, and I'll show you that here at the end. Now in terms of how to graph this sine function, sine starts at the midline, goes up first or down first depending on whether my coefficient out front is negative. And because my coefficient is negative out front, this function is going to go down first, come up through the midline, and then finish back at the midline. So what I do is graph a point at the beginning of the period, a point at the end of the period, and then halfway in between it should cross the midline again. And then in between those points, my function should either reach its minimum or maximum value, which in this case, because the coefficient out front is negative, the function sine should go down first, then up, and then back down to finish one period of the graph. So if I connected these dots here, my sine graph would look like this. If you look at example four, it's a cosine graph. There's a phase shift, but what you should notice is um, there's a plus two at the end of the function. What that means is I'm going to shift my graph up two. But in terms of identifying the amplitude and period, that is exactly the same how I would do that. So my amplitude is the number in front of my cosine function, which if there's nothing written, there's a 1 there. And my period will be 2 pi divided by the number in front of x, which if there's nothing written, there's a 1 there also. Now in terms of my phase shift, it would be to the right pi over 2. And then the only other shift that I need to consider is that plus 2 is going to move my graph up 2 which means the middle of the graph, instead of being at the x-axis, will now be at y equals 2. So there'd be the midline moves up, and then I'm going to graph my function above and below my new midline. Now, you don't have to draw a horizontal line at the midline, um, but it'll be a really good reference for you when you're sketching the rest of your graph to know uh, where the middle of your graph is. So the first thing I would do is draw a horizontal line at the value y equals 2, and that's going to act as the middle of my graph, which means if I have an amplitude of 1, my cosine function should reach a value above the midline by 1, which would be at 3, and below the midline by 1, which would be at 1. So it's going to go um, between uh, 1 and 3 on my y-axis, because my new middle is at 2 rather than at the x-axis. So what I would do then is um, break up my x-axis according to my period, which means 2 pi 
is my period. So four lines to get to two pi means each line is pi over two. And then I know that I'm gonna shift my graph to the right pi over two, which means I'm gonna put one more line past two pi so that I'll still have a um, period of two pi. So I'm gonna put a vertical line, dotted line at pi over two, and at five pi over two. And what that's going to show is basically my one period I'm gonna graph is gonna be from the uh, beginning to the end of those uh, dotted lines and then the middle of the graph is going to be at that horizontal line so if this is a cosine graph I'm gonna have an uh, amplitude of one I'm either gonna start above my midline by one or below my midline by one depending on what whether the coefficient out front is negative in this case because the coefficient is positive the first point that I'm gonna plot is one unit above the midline of two starting at pi over two so right there on that dotted line and then at the end of my period, which is at 5 pi over 2, I would return to that value. And then halfway in between, I would reach a value of 1, which is 1 unit below the midline. And then in the middle of my minimums and maximums that I have plotted there, the function should cross the midline. Notice, if I didn't have this vertical shift, those midline points would be on the x-axis, but drawing that horizontal line is a really good reference on where you're going to put the rest of your coordinates. So if I connect these points with my smooth cosine curve, then I would have considered the vertical and horizontal shift just by drawing those dotted lines in. Again, they're not part of the function. They don't need to be in your graph, but they're really good resources in terms of knowing where to put your function when you graph it. If you look at number five, Oh, before I look at number five, um, I'm just going to put a couple things on the graph here. What I wrote in red is not part of the function, but just showing again that the distance between the middle and the, low, and the lowest point is one, the middle and the highest point is one, and that the period is still two pi, but just shifted to the right. So we take a look at number five. If I want to identify the amplitude, it's the coefficient in front of the function, which is two. Now, in order to determine the period and the phase shift, I would need to do a little bit of algebra. So... Um, what I'm going to do is factor out the number in front of x. Always the whole thing that's in front of x, in this case, which is a half. So if I factor out a half, I would get 2 cosine of 1 half times the quantity x plus something minus 1. That plus something is what I need to figure out. So if I factor out a half or divide pi over 2 by a half, what I would get is actually just pi. So if I look at that newly written function, that tells me everything I need to know about what A is, what B is, what the phase shift is, and if there's a vertical shift, which in this case there is. So my period is going to be 2 pi over 1 half, which is 4 pi. It's not pi. You're dividing by a half, which is the same as multiplying by 2. So my period is going to be 4 pi. And then my phase shift is going to be to the left pi. Again, if you don't factor out that 1 half, what you'll have is a horizontal shift that's not the right amount. We want to separate our B value from our phase shift so we can see how much I should move my graph. And then the only other thing to consider is that this graph has a vertical shift down one, which means my midline is going to move down to negative one. So if I want to graph this, the first thing I'm going to do is put my midline on my graph at y equals negative one, draw a horizontal line there. And then I'm going to break up my x-axis according to my period, which means Four lines will be four pi, which is one full period, which means each line is pi. And the good news about how this works out, a lot of the examples that we're doing work out this way, is each line that I count by is um, very closely related to how much I'm going to shift. Now, it's not always going to be one line, but it could be two lines or um, three lines or half a line, but it should at least be visible on our graph. In this case, I'm going to shift to the left pi. So what I'm going to do is add... Um, a tick mark to the left of zero at negative pi and draw a vertical line there. What that's going to be is where I'm going to start graphing my function. So at negative pi, I'm going to think about how this function should look. So if this is cosine, it's either going to start above or below the midline uh, 2 because of my amplitude is 2. And because the coefficient out front is positive, I'm going to, my first point that I'm going to plot is at negative pi positive 1, which is 2 units above my middle. And then at the end of one period, which is at 3 pi, I would return to the value of 1. And then halfway in between, which is at pi, I'm going to hit my lowest value, which is actually at negative 3, 
because that's two units below the new middle, which is at negative one. And then halfway in between those two minimums and maximums, my function should cross my midline, not the x-axis, the midline. So if I connect these coordinates with my curve, that's one period of my cosine graph. Just to verify, if you look, a couple things I put on my graph here, the distance from the middle to the bottom is still 2, even though I'm at the y value of negative 3. And from the beginning to the end of my graph is from negative pi to 3 pi. That's still a period of 2 pi. So that's what your graph should look like. Again, those vertical and horizontal dotted lines are really good references, but aren't necessary or even part of the function. They're just there for you to have an idea of where to plot your coordinates for your sine or cosine graph. Then the last example has a little bit going on here. We have a uh, 3x minus pi over 2 on the inside, so I need to factor out a 3 so I can see what the phase shift is and what the period is. So first thing, the amplitude is 2, it's coefficient out front. And then in order to determine the period, again, I'm going to factor out a 3, factor out whatever the coefficient is of x. So what I'm going to write is everything but what that number is. So if I'm going to factor out a 3 from pi over 2, um, how do I figure out what that number is? The most straightforward way I can think to do it is take the number that you originally had and divide it by whatever you're factoring out. So in this case, it would be pi over 2 divided by 3. So that would, that's the same as pi over 2 times 1 third, and pi over 2 times 1 third is pi over 6. So if I factor 3 out of pi over 2, I'm making it a third as big, or cutting it into a third, dividing by 3 which means it should be pi over 6. The quickest way to check is to dis redistribute, and you should get 3x plus pi over 2, which in this case you would. So that means my period is 2 pi divided by 3. So 2 pi over 3, that doesn't reduce. And then my phase shift will be to the left pi over 6. And then this will also have a vertical shift up 1, which means my midline will move to y equals 1. And I have everything I need to start graphing this. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my new middle, my new midline, on my graph at y equals 1, make a dotted line there, and then uh, break up my x-axis according to my period. So if each, um, if I need four lines to get to the end of my period, which is 2 pi over 3, that means each line, each tick mark, would be pi over 6. And the good news is if I'm going to shift to the left pi over 6, that means that first tick mark to the left of 0 is where I'm going to start graphing my function. That would be a shift to the left pi over 6. And then if I want to graph this sine function, sine starts at the midline, goes up first or down first, depending on whether the coefficient out front is negative. In this case, the coefficient is positive, which means I'm going to plot my first point at where my midline and my vertical shift meet. That's why I draw those, those lines in there, those dotted lines. And then, because my coefficient is positive, I'm going to go up first. But the first thing I'm going to do is plot the end of my first period. So there's the beginning and end, and then actually in the middle, sine would reach its midline again. So sine has two distinct kind of bumps to it, where in the middle of the period it will cross the midline again. So like I said, because this is a positive coefficient out front, sine would reach its maximum first. So two units above the midline puts me at a y value of 3, where that maximum point is drawn, and 2 units below the midline puts me at a y value of negative 1, where that other point is drawn in terms of the minimum. So if I connect these graphs, that would be the graph of my uh, shifted left and shifted up sine graph. Examples like 5 and 6 really have all the pieces to it. You have to factor something out. You have to move the graph left or right, up and down, and adjust for amplitude. If you can put all that together in a problem, you should be in great shape for graphing.